Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to tonight's lecture recital. And thank you to those uh, watching on Facebook Live. Uh, we have several guests from Connecticut <coughs> listening in on this. Uh, the title for my lecture is The Tide of Vines, The History, Conductors, and Music of the Mystic Area Ecumenical Choir Festival in Connecticut. Since 1968, churches in the coastal area around Mystic and Nomad, Connecticut have sponsored an annual choir festival. Many prominent choral directors and composers have, have been guest conductors for the festival. Several commissioned works have been premiered at the festival and add to the repertoire for church choirs. Each piece on tonight's concert has been performed at the festival in the past. Composer, conductor, and clinician Sally Albright, after conducting the 2012 festival, wrote a short blog about it. Albright gave the challenge, I encourage each and every one of you to create or organize a similar experience in your area. Through my research, I hope to use the festival as a model to help others start successful choir festivals in their own communities. Sally Albrecht's piece, All God's Children, was dedicated to the 2012 festival and performed by all the participants. Our performance features soloist Emily Williams Birch singing the children's choir part and narration by Clay Nelson. Thank you. 
To understand the fertile ground for the formation of a choir festival in 1968, I traced the roots of church choirs and music education in New England, beginning with the metrical psalm singing tradition that the Puritan settlers <coughs> brought with them in the 17th century. After 100 years, thanks in part to the Age of Enlightenment and leadership of two Harvard-educated ministers, Thomas Sims and Thomas Walter, singing schools were formed in and around Boston to help rid the churches of what Walter described as an horrid medley of confused and disorderly noises. In 1721, the first singing school manual, an introduction to the singing of psalm tunes, was produced by a pastor named John Tufts. Toward the end of the 18th century, mandated psalm singing and worship fell away, and the music of composers such as William Billings began to replace it. Billings was the first significant American-born choral composer. William Billings' Rejoice He Shining Worlds on High was published in Billings' last collection of published works, The Continental Harmony, 1794, with the title Dead. The editor indicates that the melody in Billings' piece is in the tenor part. It is customary to have the soprano sing it an octave higher than written, and to have the tenor sing the soprano line an octave lower than written. We will perform the first verse this way. In the second verse, we will utilize a performance option which Billings described as sweet and ravishing, with a mix of tenor and soprano on both parts.
By the 19th century, with the founding of the Hanlon and Hyman Society in Boston, 1816, and the formation of the Boston Academy of Music, 1833, leaders such as Lowell Mason and Samuel Atkins Elliott began taking the idea of singing <coughs> schools to the next level, the first public school music education in the United States. Samuel Elliott, president of the Boston Academy of Music, later became the mayor of Boston and helped chart a path to music education in Boston public schools. A committee was formed regarding music education in the, in the 1830s. The Committee on Music Education was able to approve a recommendation without the fear of financial hardship due to Lowell Mason, a wealthy former banker and organist and singing teacher, volunteering to teach the first year. With the success of music education in the Boston Public Schools, interest in forming music education in public schools began to spread elsewhere, such as Georgia, South Carolina, Virginia, Tennessee, Ohio, Maryland, New York, and Connecticut. Collegiate glee clubs began to take root in New England colleges in the mid-19th century, beginning at Harvard, 1858, and then at Yale, 1861. By the early 20th century, under the direction of Archibald T. Davison, the glee club at Harvard began abandoning its roots of performing college songs and glees to the accompaniment of banjos and mandolins for more sophisticated choral literature from the great European masters. Our next piece on the concert by Gabriel Poiré is a well-loved piece of sacred choral literature from the 19th century. Poiré composed the piece in 1865 toward the end of his musical studies. He revised it several times, and at least one published version shows a dedication to Caesar Franck. We will perform it in the original French language.
By the 1930s, an a cappella choir movement in U.S. high schools was at its peak. After World War II and into the 1950s, in the cities and to some extent the more populated New England towns, <coughs> having a large church building with a pipe organ and quartet of one professional singer per part was becoming a symbol of prosperous American middle class life. Once graduated from school and collegiate choral programs, singers sought out opportunities to continue singing. Beneficiaries of this were large church choirs made up of volunteers or a mix of professionals and volunteers. The Mystic Area Ecumenical Choir Festival is sponsored each year and funded with the help of the Mystic Area Ecumenical Council. The council is the result of a merger in 1971 between two separate but like-minded organizations, the Mystic Area Ministers Association and the Mystic Interfaith Layman's Council. The Mystic Area Ecumenical Council provides an organizational structure that brings member churches together for many shared events in the community. It provides an avenue for fundraising for the festival, clergy leadership for the festival service, and lay leaders who plan the annual festival. The Reverend James L. Pratt arrived as minister at Noah Baptist Church in 1963. Pratt was a recent graduate of Harvard University and Yale Divinity School. During his undergraduate years, uh, he had sung with and managed the Harvard Glee Club. Pratt is credited with having founded the Mystic Area Ecumenical Choir Festival in 1968. He also served as the general chairperson of the festival until 1993. Jim Pratt utilized a unique skill set for a senior minister. As a gifted pianist and a collegiate trained singer during the, his 38 years as minister of the parish in Noah Baptist, Pratt also directed the children's choir for the majority of that time. Two of the ways that he recruited singers into the choir were annual participation in the choir festival and uh, personally chaperoned sightseeing trips to Boston and New York. The large youth choir in Noah often accounted for one third to one half of the youth participants in the early festivals. As a minister, Pratt had a great interest in cooperative work with churches of all faiths. Through his activity with the Mystic Area Ministers uh, Association, Pratt was able to achieve his goals of cooperative work between churches and bringing churches together to sing. The 2000 festival was dedicated to Jim Pratt upon his retirement. Hal Hobson conducted the festival that year and was also commissioned to write a new choral work, O Praise Ye the Lord, based on a hymn tune by Charles Hubert Hastings Parry, which we will perform as the last piece on tonight's concert. Jim Pratt had some help with other members of the clergy in the area who had musical interests. Prior to several combined adult choir events, area churches met from time to time for hymn singing occasions, led by Albert Gates, minister of the Union Baptist Church. In an interview with Pratt, he recalled the hymn singing services and the enthusiastic leadership of Pearly Gates, as Pratt referred to him, and how Pearly was sorely missed during the years he had left the area to be a missionary in Hong Kong. Pratt recalled how the early combined choir events were a result of a conversation between the two ministers in which Pearly suggested that Pratt help get the churches together to sing some real music. Newell Bishop was a longtime minister of the North Stony <coughs> Congregational Church. Pratt and Bishop became friends during their years at Yale Divinity School and had sung together in the Yale Chapel Choir. The 1999 festival was dedicated to Bishop upon his retirement. Philip Dietrich, festival conductor that year, was commissioned to arrange a youth choir piece, The Joyful Saints of God, 
based on a shaker melody. <clears throat> Walter Edmonds was a student at Yale Divinity School when he was director of music at the Union Baptist Church in the mid-1960s. Edmonds, a United Methodist minister, has also had a distinguished career as a leader in church music and was invited to conduct the festival in 2011. Jane Schmidt became the general chairperson of the festival in 1993 after Jim Pratt. She was a teacher at Knowing Elementary School and was a gifted pianist and musician. Schmidt worked with Jim Pratt for many years in planning the festivals. While published composer Michael Bedford <coughs> conducted the, fest the 2009 festival dedicated to Schmidt and was commissioned to compose the piece, The Greatest of These is Love, in her honor. Michael Noonan and Robin Crandall currently head the playing team for the festival. Michael grew up singing in the festival as a member of St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Mystic and was a working student of Roberta Bidgood, an important leader of the festival. He is a full-time music educator and he worked with Newell Bishop for many years in his church position at North Stonington Congregational. Robin Crandall is a retired music educator and music director of the Union Baptist Church in Mystic. There are four, five, there are five historical periods in the festival's history. Combined hymn singing before 1965, collaborative for performances of major choral works by adult choirs starting in 1965, a children's choir festival beginning in 1968, and a multi-generational choir festival from 1972 to present. High-profile guest conductors began coming in 1978. Each year, the festival tends to reflect the specialty of the guest conductor. The planning team rotates specialties based on expertise in children's choirs, adult choirs, and composers of church music who are encouraged to include the choral pieces on their program that they've written. For Festival Milestones, new choral pieces are commissioned. In addition to conducting the festival service, each guest conductor presents a 90-minute workshop that is free and open to the public beyond those who register for the festival. I grew up singing in the Mystic Area Ecumenical Choir Festival. In 2017, I was invited to guest conduct the festival, held at my home church, Noe Baptist. Participation in the festival included 13 churches with approximately 50 youth singers, grades 3 through 12, and 100 adult singers. The following two pieces of mine were performed at last year's festival. I composed Deo Gratias in 2006. It was published in 2007 and received a very nice review in the American Organist shortly after that. Based on a slightly modernized version of the Middle English text, often used during Advent, it can be performed with a modern pronunciation. Tonight, we will use a pronunciation that we think may sound more like the original Middle English.
My setting of the church's one foundation is quite a bit different than the standard hymnal version, although I do quote that on one of the verses. It alternates between several mixed meters throughout the piece. It was commissioned in, 19, in, uh, sorry, in 2008 for the 150th anniversary of the First Presbyterian Church in Mount Airy, North Carolina. The original version was for four-part adult choir, organ, and brass quintet. For the 2017 festival, I revised the brass parts for a brass quartet and outlined sections that could be sung by the children.
For the first cooperative performance of Handel's Messiah in 1965, Jim Pratt suggested that Fennel Heath, the conductor of the Yale Glee Club, be the guest conductor. <laughs> Pratt knew Heath from his Harvard and Yale days. In the early years, 1965 to 1968, a combined adult choir performed several major works. In 1968, after a Latin performance of parts two and three of Handel's Messiah, the churches decided that it might be nice for the children to have a combined singing event the following December. The first of the children's choir festivals was held at the Union Baptist Church in Mystic on December 8, 1968. There were 100 singers in the children's choir, representing five area churches. Mystic Congregational, First United Methodist, Noe Baptist, St. Mark's Episcopal, and Union Baptist. The Mystic Area Ministers Association sponsored the festival and concert. Its president, Reverend James Carnini of St. Patrick's Church, gave the benediction. In 1969, another children's choir festival took place in December. In 1970 and 71, transitional years, there was no record of a children's choir festival, however, there were joint adult choir performances. From 1972 to 1977, the current festival format began to take root. Conductors from within the region were called in as guests. Two noteworthy conductors during this period were Donald Lang and George Kent. Lang conducted the festival for the first time in 1973 as a doctoral candidate at the Hart School of Music in Hartford. Lang also conducted festivals in 74, 76, and 80. George Kent conducted the festival in 1975. He was a faculty member at the University of Rhode Island. Kent also founded the Chorus of Western Rhode Island in 1959 and was its musical director until 2012. Beginning with 1978, the festival began to see conductors with a national reputation. Roberta Bitgood was from nearby New London, Connecticut, and was an organist, composer, and choral director of national prominence. In 1975, Bitgood was elected the first female president of the American Guild of Organists. After retiring from full-time work, she returned to the area and, and was uh, director of music at St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Mystic. Four of her children's choir pieces are included in the festival library. The 2004 festival was dedicated to her. Helen Kemp conducted the festival in 1979 and 1983. Kemp was internationally known as a composer of children's choir music and as a children's choir expert on the faculty of Westminster Choir College. Helen Kemp and her choral techniques were the subject of a 1993 doctoral dissertation. The festival library includes five pieces by her. Composer Philip Dietrich conducted the festival in 1981, 84, 87, and 99. According to Jim Pratt, Dietrich and composer Hal Hobson were two festival favorites. They were both very popular right then, and of course, with the audience, their music was popular, Pratt said. Hobson conducted the festival in 1986, 91, and 2000. Both composers have numerous works published by major publishers. The festival library includes 12 pieces by Dietrich, including a commissioned work in 1999, and the festival library includes 23 pieces by Hobson, including the 2000 commission arrangement on tonight's program. Douglas Wagner, conductor of the festival in 1985, is an internationally known composer with over 2,500 titles in publication. James Linton, past director of the American Boy Choir, conducted the festival in 1988 and in 90. Sue Ellen Page, a well-published composer and children's choir specialist, conducted the festival in 1992 and 98. Three of her pieces are in the festival. 
During the 1990s, several, several of the conductors were well-known church choral composers with numerous published works. Michael Joppin in 1993, John Horman in 1994 and 2001, and Alan Pope in 1995. Pope has been commissioned to compose a new piece, Come Sing a New Song, this year for the 50th anniversary. The piece is scored for SATD chorus and organ, and optional treble choir, brass, timpani, and percussion. Michael Kemp directed the festival in 1996 and again in 2004. In 2004, two commissioned pieces by Kemp were written for the festival dedicated to Roberta Bittman. One of the pieces is an arrangement of his mother, Helen Kemp's piece, Candlelight Burning Bright, for all festival participants. The other piece is Welcome, Little One, both are in publication. The festival has a library of over 300 pieces. Each year, in the planning phase, the guest conductor is asked to select about half of the program as new pieces, and the other half from existing uh, in the library. The conductor is also encouraged to include music of the festival applicable to various seasons of the church year. I introduced Mary McDonald's I'm Going to Sing and Shout at last year's festival. This energetic, gospel-style piece is written for mixed chorus and piano with optional brass, drums, and bass guitar. Tonight, we are performing it with piano and brass. Our soloist is on the day.
Vanella joined Jenkins, a faculty member at Westminster Choir College, and artistic director of the Princeton Girl Choir, was conductor of the festival <coughs> in 2005 and 08. Jenkins will also conduct this year's festival next month, 50th anniversary. Jamie Spillane, director of choral activities at the University of Connecticut, conducted the festival in 2010 and 16. Jamie grew up in Mystic, participating in the festival. Composers Greg Gilpin, Mark Patterson, and Victor C. Johnson conducted the festival in 2013, 2014, and 2015, respectively. We will close our program tonight with Hal Hobson's arrangement, O Praise the Lord, that was commissioned for the 2000 festival dedicated to festival founder Jim Pratt. The piece has several performance options, including the option of the church congregation joining in on the last verse. Tonight, we will perform it with organ, brass, and our solo is Carrie Lee Pearson. Thank you again for coming to tonight's concert.